Hey guys, it's Simon. Today's video is going to be on low float stocks on your watch list, how to keep track of low float on thinkorswim, um, and a scanner to scan for low float and potentially breakout stocks. Um, this was done because of some questions um, from some members of my YouTube channel who were asking about Douglas Copeland's video and how to find keep track of low float and also how to scan for them. So I thought I'd make a quick video. Um, if you haven't seen his video, you should take a look at it. It's actually really good. It's his first video. He doesn't actually uh, have a YouTube channel for the public, but he's going to be making videos and featuring on my YouTube channel um, as he makes them. So I'll um, link to it in the description section of this video and uh, if you get a chance take a look at it it's really good he's also a, a fellow member of uh, our zip trader group that we um, we both belong to so we're gonna do um, to show you how to uh, to check on the float for a stock and you can't really do this in thinkorswim um, but there's a way to do something similar or something that will uh, will give you an idea so you don't have to switch between two different uh, applications all the time or two different between the web and Think or swim. So if you go to your watch list, um, on the in the top right hand corner of the box of the watch list, there's a little gear sign here, and you click on the gear and you go to customize. You can just uh, type in in the lookup column, you can type in shares and add that to your watch list. If you do that, it'll give you the number of shares, which isn't the actual float, but it gives you something close to so it give you an idea and I can show this to you if I if you go to Tesla and it says 178 million shares if you go to Yahoo Finance and you type in Tesla and it comes up with the Tesla ticker if you go to statistics you'll see the float here and it says 128 million so we're looking pretty close I mean it's 50 million when with over when you're talking about share size or share volume it's um, actually not off by too much but you can use the shares um, column to kind of keep an eye on how many shares are available which it isn't like I said not completely accurate but it does give you a fairly decent estimate and an overestimate so you can use that okay so we're gonna do a quick uh, we're gonna do a setup of a quick scan and then I will show you how to set up an alert with the scan and um, this will ho hopefully help you with your um, day trading so the scan we're gonna be searching we're gonna be um, making today is a low float potential breakout scan so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the scan tab under thinkorswim and we'll be under the stock hacker to make sure that's clicked. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add a filter for the stock, and that will be last. And last, uh, of course, is the last price. So this is also dependent on what kind of stocks you're looking for. Um, we're going to go through something. We're going to go through just basically penny stocks and a little bit above penny stocks. And a penny stock is anything that's sh um, that's trading at five dollars a share or less. But we're going to do um, stocks of a dollar. Up to ten dollars, and then we will add another filter for the stock, and that will be shares. So for shares, we're going to um, stick with three hundred thousand up to the maximum, which is infinite. The next one we'll add is percent change and that's at the very bottom here alphabetical order and since percent isn't in the alphabet but uh, we're going to start with a five a plus five up to the max which is infinite and to the right of each one of these you'll see a number and that'll show how many matches it, um, it shows um, and that's within all of the stock market I'm sorry about that and then the final one we're, we're going to add we're not going to add a filter for the stock market. we're going to add a study filter and this we're going to go down to volume and under volume, you have three different options, average volume, unusual volume, and volume change. And you can mess with these on your own if you want to, um, to kind of see what it picks up. Uh, but this one, I'm going to actually go with average volume this time. We're going to go for the last 50 days, and the period will be the simple moving average of volume of greater than 
one million. We're gonna leave these at default. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna actually hit the scan button and scan it and see how what it comes up with. So we're on the week of July 4th, 2019. And if anybody has been paying to the stock, paying attention to the stock market, which if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you are, um, you can see here in the last 50 days, some of the familiar biotech stocks that have been breaking out. KPTI was the last one. It happened right before the 4th of July um, holiday. And it went up 36% for that. And the volume was at 50, almost 15 million. And I think it jumped up from like $6 to $9, over $9. That's correct, actually low and high. There you go. So this sh shows that anything that's either broken out in the last 50 days, and then it'll also give you an idea of what's about to. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually set up an alert so that if anything gets added to this list, we'll know about it immediately and then we can take we can keep an eye on it. So if you click back on the top right hand menu icon, which is the three dots and the three uh, lines, if you click on that and there's an alert when scan results change. If you click on that, you can name this whatever you want to. So we'll actually call this volume uh, breakout. And so once we create that, you'll actually be able to notify with a sound, which which sound you want to, um, and you'll actually notify on, on your mobile device also, so that way you don't have to be in front of your computer all the time. And then you can also have notifications, like a message for every single change or only um, certain variables. And then also you can set an expire date if you want to, or if you not, just leave it. And then, once you click create, if you go to your watch list, so right now this is on my, see this on my quotes. Let's go to this, go to the one that we just created, which is under personal. And I have it broken up into two different uh, sections because I have so many watch lists. I actually make watch lists for pretty much everything. Um, it's July, so I'm making, I made a ton of watch lists for earnings releases. And if you, so what I did was I actually, this. I typed in all the earnings releases based off of a calendar that I looked up online that shows all the earnings releases and I break it up per day so that way every single day of the month that has an earning re earnings release I actually have a watch list for it so I have ones from the first of July all the way up to the end of July um, and then clicking on them you can see like on July the 25th there's a ton of, um, of earnings releases if you don't want to do this because it's kind of labor intensive I actually, in, a, in the Zip Trader group, under the file section, I uploaded a zip file with all of these earnings release files, they're um, Excel documents, and they're all separate because I wanted one for each separate day. And so if you download that, unzip it to your computer, and then you click on the day, or the, sorry, the name of the, um, the watch list, and go down to import, and then select where whichever file you want to import, you can actually import these watch lists into your TOS without having to do anything because I've already done the work for you. So anyway, let's go back to what we were doing before we got sidetracked and let's go to the watch list we just created, which is the volume breakout. And we'll click on that and now it's listed here. And if we want to go to the charts section and let's say we wanted to link this. So right now the link on the chart is the red one. You can actually unlink it. This is the default is unlinked. If you click on that and you click on the red one, and then if you do the same thing under the watch list link, you click on red one. Now, whatever you click on, on this watch list will pop up in your charts. And then you can change the view. I have it on a default five day, one minute, because and that's a customized one I made for myself. And that's why, that way I can actually go back five days. Um, but you obviously can set up your TOS any way you want to. But this is the way to kind of keep an eye out on, on these um, this specific sand scan that we did. Uh, and it also alerts us and then also how to link it to your charts. So those are hopefully some tips and tricks you can that'll be helpful for your trading. Uh, this is um, in conjunction with uh, obviously Mr. Copeland's video that he made, Douglas Copeland's video he made. But I'll, like I said, I'll link that in the, uh, com in the in the description section so that uh, you can you know how to find it. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Uh, I'm going to post this in a link into the Zip Trader so that uh, 
and then I'll let you, I'll alert the people who actually requested this video because uh, it was a video request. Anyway, thanks uh, for watching my video, and hopefully I'll see you at the next one.